Hello everyone, welcome back, long time no see. Today's video is gonna be answering some questions about moving on and how I was able to let go of my marriage and my ex-husband and how I knew I was ready to move on. I don't wanna to talk too much about my current relationship. For those of you who don't know, I am in a serious relationship. And part of moving on obviously has to do with that new relationship and finding that other person. But I get a lot of questions about like how the heck was I ready to move on? How did I grieve? How did I turn away from CJ and like accept him leaving me because it was all on him. It wasn't even my choice. So I'm gonna answer those questions today. All right, back in the beginning when CJ, you know, first told me he couldn't commit to me, he gonna be faithful to me and that we needed to not only separate but get divorced. I mean, it was devastating and I refused to believe him. If you read my book or know my story about me and CJ meeting and falling in love and getting married in the temple. It was so miraculous. I felt like truly it was so divine. Like God's hand was involved in bringing us together and us getting married in the temple. It was miraculous to me. It was the biggest blessing in my life. So I'm sure you can imagine why that would make it extra difficult for me to be okay with ending my marriage. Like regardless of how much CJ had hurt me or betrayed me with his infidelity and his um mistakes of his past. I was so committed to our marriage. And even though I had made mistakes and I struggled with infidelity at one point, I was determined to make our marriage work. And I truly believed that God would heal us and that God would heal our marriage and God would transform our hearts and our lives and our marriage. And that CJ would have a changed heart and that he would be able to overcome his addiction, overcome his temptations, and that his heart would be turned towards his family, that he would have the faith and the desire and the hope in himself, in God, and in us to be a family. And I felt like if I just said, all right, CJ, fine, you want a divorce? All right, that that was me giving up and me not having enough faith. So I just clung to my faith as much as possible. At this time, you know, I was going into like biblical Christianity and I was in a new church and every Sunday, like these sermons were about suffering and broken heart and trials and challenges. And it was all so applicable to me. And I really just felt like God was showing me, like, I know what you're going through. I know how bad this hurts. I know how hard this is. You have to do hard things sometimes, but I'm with you. I spent every night alone. I could not go to sleep. I would stay up as late as I possibly could until I just passed out because I did not want to be alone with my thoughts while trying to fall asleep. I listened to Christian music non-stop. One specific song by Justin Bieber and Tori Kelly that is amazing called Where Do I Fit In? I literally had to listen to that song every night to put me to sleep. I actually wrote like mantras to put on my wall to remind me that this wasn't my fault and that what CJ and I had was real and all these things to just help me survive because I didn't know how to have faith. I wanted to have faith. I wanted to believe that like there was a purpose in all this and that it would work out, but it was really hard to believe. There was um, a Christian song that I listened to called Waymaker. And it says, he's the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And I just clung to that and believed he will make a way. He performs miracles. He is the miracle worker. He will make the way. He will keep his promises. Like God told me that CJ and I are supposed to be together. God told me that we were meant for each other and that our love was real. I believe he's going to make that miracle happen. And I was just looking for any and every sign to point me towards CJ and I getting back together. And I just acted on that. That was what I wanted. That's what I believed would be God's plan because why would God want my family to fall apart? So I just tried to have so much faith and love CJ and do everything I could on my own to just cling to Jesus. There was a lot of introspection that happened during that time. A lot of thinking about my relationship with Jesus and God and with myself and like who I was and what I deserved. And I found myself so quickly going to a place of I'd give up anything. I'd sacrifice anything to keep my marriage. I'm willing to have an open marriage if that's what CJ needs. I'm willing to keep going to Mormon church if that's what CJ needs. I'm willing to have no expectations and never has to ask him of anything if that's what he needs. I was so desperate. And then I started looking um, for outside resources. I started following all sorts of Instagram accounts about divorce and like psychologist accounts and addiction and narcissism and all these things that 
helped provide a lot of insight. And of course, still going to therapy as well. And my therapist made some really interesting points about, you know, it's all fine and dandy if, if you really want this and if you feel that that's what's right and that's what you want, but why do you want that so badly? I realized I was operating entirely out of fear and a lack of control. And I was just trying to control something and to cling on to something. And what I knew and what was comfortable with CJ and my marriage. And I started to realize this concept of we accept the love we think we deserve. And even though I knew that I was a good wife and a good mother and a good person and a good Christian, and I tried very hard and I knew I was worthy and deserving of love and respect and kindness, there was some part of me that felt like it was normal to be in a marriage where you give and give and give and get not a lot in return. Or that it was normal to be controlled or talked down to or all of these things that I had been experiencing in my marriage over the past six years. So I started thinking about what I deserve. Take out what I'm used to, take out what's comfortable, take out how much I love CJ. What do I deserve? Do I deserve to be willing to sacrifice so much and give everything and wait and be patient for someone who could not do the same for me? I would like to think that CJ would do the same for me if the roles were reversed, but the situation right now shows me that he can't. He can't do it right now. And then it slowly started to shift to be less and less about what are my expectations from a partner, from a husband, from a man, and more about my expectations for myself. The type of mother I want to be, the type of human I want to be, the type of woman I want to be. What do I expect of myself? I expect myself to love myself and respect myself and not let people walk all over me or verbally abuse me or to control me or demean me or, and I, I'm not trying to turn this into like a CJ bashing video by any means, but I just realized it's not about what I need my husband to be, what I needed CJ to be. It's about what I need to be. I need to be a woman who doesn't tolerate X, Y, and Z and who will only tolerate A, B, C, if that makes sense. Good, healthy things, not perfection because no one's perfect. I had to set some boundaries with myself, not with CJ, with myself, that I will not allow you, Hallie, I will not allow you self to be disrespected the way you're disrespecting yourself right now. And that was not an easy place to get to because like I said, I was so desperate to keep my family together. I felt convinced in a spiritual way that God wanted my family to stay together and that CJ and I were meant to be together. And if it was right then, it's still right now. But then I, again, thankfully going into Christianity and leaving Mormonism, I, I reminded myself not to rely on my feelings so much instead of focusing on, but I feel like we're meant to be together, but I feel blah, blah, blah with CJ. What did I know? What are the facts? The facts are one, he does not want me. Two, he cannot be with me right now. Three, if he were to stay with me, I would continue to be abused emotionally, spiritually. I would be demeaned and disrespected. I would be living in a way where I was carrying so much hurt and pain and sadness that I can't show up and be the type of mother that I need to be for my kids. And I started remembering to take off the rose colored glasses. And instead of thinking about, but oh, he's my best friend. Like I went on dates with guys and I came home crying on my hands and knees saying, please don't make me be single. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to go back out there. I want to be with my best friend. I want to come home and be with my family. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is my home. This is where my best friend is. This is where my kids are. This is my life. I don't want to be out there dating and out with strangers. But when I took off those rose colored glasses and remembered how much pain I walked around, this house in every day that I spun around this house looking for ways to distract myself with cleaning, with social media, with buying stuff, with whatever. And I took off those rose colored glasses and remembered there was a lot of pain here too. And this is an opportunity for you to be free from that. This is not something that I asked for. This is not something I wanted. This is something, a circumstance that I cannot control. I can't change the circumstance that CJ feels and thinks and believes what he does. All I can control is how I respond to that. And I don't have to respond by clinging onto something that was very painful. 
I can choose to look at the circumstance as an opportunity for me to be free, for me to come closer to Jesus, for me to find myself as an individual. And as I started doing that, I started to respect myself more and love myself more and see more and more the expectations I wanted to have for myself and the standard I wanted to hold myself to. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it was so easy because it wasn't. Um, I started to really find myself and feel like confident and good and even good in the fact that CJ and I could have a future. But I felt like I was starting to stand up for myself more and know that if he were to ever come back to me, he would have to be a different human because of the standards I had for myself of the type of partner that I would be with and what I would tolerate. And even if he could commit to me and be faithful to me, I wasn't going to tolerate any longer the things that I once did in our marriage. And then when someone new came into my life, you bet your butt it helped. Um, I know there are so many women who wonder like, how could you trust someone again, especially like in such a short amount of time? How was I even ready to date? And Honestly, I didn't expect anything to come from the dates, but I did take the guys I hung out with, went out with seriously because I was not going to waste my time. Like I was not going to fool around. I was not going to hook up. I wasn't even going to bother to spend time with someone who I knew I wasn't compatible with and it would never go somewhere. I just didn't care to waste my time. So I had um, high standards again for myself, expectations of myself. These are the things that I believe in. These are the things that I want. These are the things that are important to me and I'm not interested in anything less. I'm not going to try to make someone be what I want them to be. They're either going to be that and we're going to see where it goes or they're not that and the end. So when I met my boyfriend, he was a human that I've never met before, like completely different type of human. I had no idea that it was possible for someone to be so open-minded, so giving, so loving, so kind, so hardworking, so driven honest, open, like emotionally mature, in tune with their feelings, very good at communicating, someone who doesn't get defensive, doesn't feel attacked, doesn't put me down, someone who can easily like weed through my tone of voice or my attitude or the way I say things and like interpret me correctly, someone who's patient with me, like just, (laughs) I had no idea it was possible. (laughs) So when I discovered that, it was like, whoa, this is really good. Like, I don't want to let this go. But I still felt myself at times feeling like I don't want to be a quitter. I don't want to give up on CJ. I don't want to have a lack of faith. I don't want to one day regret that I didn't wait for him. Like if I gave it six months or a year, would he have come back to me? Would he have changed? You know, that was my husband. That's my kid's dad. Like, how can I let that go? So in one sense, that was hard. But then I realized that the only thing that I really had to grieve was the potential of a what if future. What if he came back different? What if he came back at all? What if we had more kids? What if he left the church too? What if blah, 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 blah. And those are all things completely outside of my control and things I cannot predict. And as much as feelings don't care about facts, facts don't care about feelings. And it doesn't matter how much I would worry about feeling regret or feeling like I lost something. The facts are, I can't control CJ. I can't predict the future. All I know are the facts of the right here and now. Where is CJ at? Who is CJ right now? Who is this new guy right now? And who am I right now? And to be honest, I resisted a little bit. I resisted the facts because I focus on feelings. That's what like Mormons are programmed to do is how do you feel? What does the Holy, the Holy Ghost tell you in your heart? And, and it was hard for me to resist making those purely emotional choices. But there were times when like, I would have to be very honest with myself and say, is this my gut? Is this my instinct? Or is this my fear? Is this my emotions? Is this my trauma talking to me? Not the spirit, not God, not my gut or my instinct or my conscience, but what is act- what am I actually feeling here? I realized very quickly that it was anything that was pulling me back to CJ was not right. And then it became so clear to me what God wanted for me. And I've said this before, I feel like my life is like this current, right? It's flowing, going downstream, and I was trying to go upstream. I was trying to grab onto rocks, I was trying to grab onto twigs, anything I could to pull me along upstream. I was trying to cling onto anything that like proved my point or made my case. Like, but CJ did this, or but I felt this at one point, or I think this. 
And I tried to hold on to those things to take my life in the way I wanted it to go because I like to be in control and I like to have things my way. But in reality, God was just taking me somewhere else. God was trying to show me something else. And every time I tried to resist it, I was proven wrong. Like, no, Hallie. And that is how I knew that it was nothing I was doing. I was not making this happen. I did not make this guy come into my life. I did not make this guy be what I want. I did not make my pastor say certain things or this happen. Like, I didn't even make CJ do certain things. Things just happened that showed me I am not supposed to be with CJ. I freaking crashed his date that he was on with another girl and gave him a chance to get me back. I told him I would re not sign the divorce papers and I would refuse to consent to this because I didn't want this. I tried everything within my power, again, trying to make things go my way and it wasn't working. And at some point I had to look at it and say, what is God trying to show me here? And when I opened my eyes and let life happen, miraculous, amazing things happen. This person who came into my life, I, I can't even describe him and explain how miraculous and amazing he is. Like what I never knew is possible, what I never knew existed. I had no clue. No clue it could be like this. And again, back to the point of, well, how do you know? How can you believe him? How can you trust him? I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, see, there was like a, a switch that kind of flipped with CJ, but it also flipped because of me. Because once we became married and once we had kids, I changed. And CJ and I were living in this fairy tale of what will it look like when we're married? What will it look like when we can have sex? What will it look like when we have kids? And it was all kind of a futuristic, the potential of it, right? The potential was exciting. The dream and the fairy tale of it was exciting. We didn't actually know what it was going to be like. And I didn't know what I would be like. But now that I've been through so much in the past six years, and I've, I'm not coming from a place of insecurity like I was with CJ. I'm not coming from a place of desperation and insecurity. Although I know you guys will think I am. I know you'll think, of course you're insecure. Your husband left you. Of course you're desperate. I'm not. Like CJ was taking care of me financially. I know where I'm at in my life as an individual, as a woman. I did not have those insecurities. I did not have that fear and that desperation for validation from a man. I honestly didn't want it. Like going on those dates and being on dating apps, I didn't like it. I just wanted CJ. But bringing this person into my life, being 1 million percent my authentic, honest self, it's not a fantasy of what would it look like to have kids? What would it look like to have a house? What would it look like to be together? It's here. Come spend a weekend and see what it's like to have kids and to be married to me when I'm stressed and I'm grumpy and I am hormonal and I'm jealous and whatever. Like. I've just been shown miraculously what life could be like and it's just completely worth it and it meets all my expectations that I have for myself. It's it's again it's about what do I expect for myself as a as a mother and as a woman. Now I can see that I let myself down in my marriage to CJ. Thankfully he was the one to leave me or else I don't think I would have left him ever. And that makes it hard. But Again, it provided that freedom for me and it allowed me the time and space to reflect and learn. And, and now I know that as horrible as it is to break up a family and to put kids through divorce, it is the best thing for me as an individual. And I'm sure for CJ as an individual as well, because I was not my best self when I was with him. No matter how good I was as a wife and a mother and whatever, like I was not my best self with him because I did not meet my own expectations for myself. And again, as I was saying, it was more about grieving the future that I thought I would have with CJ and not so much about grieving the past because while there was so much good and love and happiness and connection, you know, he was my best friend. There was a lot of pain there that I can happily let go of. And I had been grieving that for years. Truly, I had. Especially since I had been going to therapy, I was able to grieve that pain and that loss and and give it its space and it's time to recognize it and sit in it and deal with it but I'm I'm past that now. I'd been in that space for so long that now it's it's not about the sadness of what I am losing 
from my future or from what I lost in the past. It's about the here and now. What I've got right now is really good. And that gives me every indication that the future will be really good. I know this seems like it happened so fast. I mean, it was a gut-wrenching time. <laughs> Just absolutely horrible. When I look back on when this whole thing first started, when CJ and I first separated at the beginning of May, I was just in the worst, dark, horrible place. And within a month, I progressed so much. And then after I met my boyfriend and, and that whole first month of dating him and kind of getting over that tug of war of this is really good and this seems very right, but I feel this and I want that. I just learned so much and I've just been guided and directed and it it really is a miracle. I don't I don't know how else to say it. It's a miracle that I've been able to work through all that pain and that heartache and, and progress so much and to find someone so good. So again without going into too much detail about my relationship because one day he and I will come on here and share our story. I know God was with me every step of the way. And I knew there would be a reason for it all and a purpose and that one day it would make sense. And now I get it. And it's not because it led me to someone else. Well, that is amazing. It's because of how it transformed me and the person I became and the things that I learned. And anyway, I hope that answers the question, how I was able to let go of my ex and let go of my marriage and be able to move on. Obviously, every circumstance is different. Every marriage that ends, every relationship that ends is different. So if you are in this situation where you are thinking about breaking up, or filing for divorce or whatever it is, like I can't give you advice on how you know that that's right and how you know you're ready to do that because I did not want this. This wasn't my idea. And I'm sure I would have taken CJ back if he had been willing. But it got to a certain point where, again, I had too much like love and respect for myself and I had expectations and boundaries for myself that I just, I knew what needed to be done. So I hope that answered that for you. Thank you for watching and being along in this journey. I'm going to try to make some more videos. I'm going to try to do some vlogging and show you guys what life is like around here these days. So please be patient with me as I work on getting more videos up. But thank you for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye.